A warrant in third grader who's only eight years old owes his life tonight to the gift of a stranger. Three weeks ago, Rutger Scott came down with what everyone thought was the flu, but by Sunday, doctors said he needed a new liver or he would die. Emily Schmidt is here now with more on what happened next. Emily? Allison and Leon, Rutger has always been in. My name is Rutger Scott. On November 11, 2008, at 9 a.m., a young boy at the age of eight received a necessary liver transplant. I was that boy. The operation was performed by many surgeons at Georgetown Hospital in Washington, D.C. It was a dire case, one that took place ahead over 10,000 waiting patients. I needed that liver that night or I would have surely faced the hand of death. However, this documentary is not an examination of the pain that I went through to be here today, but a study of the motivation and trepidation that consumed the person who stood by my hospital bed every night of those arduous seven weeks. That person was my mother. Hi, my name is Tanya Scott and I'm the mom of Rutger Scott. And uh, this is the story about uh, Rutger's um, liver transplant that was performed on November 11th. 2008 at 9 a.m. 11th, 2008. Okay, uh, it all started when uh, Rutger got sick back in October of two. 2008 um, we thought it was a stomach virus a simple stomach virus but uh, he would go a few days of uh, being sick and then he would get better and we would think that he was getting better and he'd go back to school and then he would get worse again and so um, we actually thought he was better and and feeling like himself and went to school on October 28 2008 and came home uh, completely yellow which is called jaundice and even the whites of his eyes were yellow so um, at eight and a half years old I knew that wasn't normal so I took him to his pediatrician and they drew blood and realized that his bilirubin levels um, were very high at 13 and they're supposed to be below one that's his liver function test and how his liver is performing and how did you feel when you learned that you needed the uh, liver transplant um, I don't really remember. All I know is that, like, I was young. I didn't know really right what to think. I, I didn't even know what a liver transplant so if you was. Want. All I know is that, like, yeah, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to get better. I didn't know, I didn't feel anything because I, I felt like I was fine. I wanted to get home. Um, yeah, I just, I just didn't know how to feel. Well, uh, you refused pain meds after the first couple of days because they made you sick. So I, uh, I was, of course, in the hospital with you. I never left your side. So I would have to massage your feet and your legs for hours at a time. That was the only thing that would make you feel better. And you had issues where your IV lines got infected. The, the IV, some, whenever they'd get infected, I'd feel this, this sudden pain. And then they couldn't find a vein that wouldn't roll or blow. And so they just could not stick you anywhere else because you had so many um, IVs in you. And of course they had that big um, IV line in your throat. Um, and your uh, we finally found one way up here by your shoulder, but uh, just rubbing your feet and your legs with lotion is the only thing that would make you calm down and keep you from feeling pain and, and often cause you to fall asleep. Oh, when I was in the hospital, what was the most, like, painful thing to see? Like, what what did you, I don't know. I don't, I don't mean to get you emotional, just like. This is you in the hospital. This was the most painful thing for, for any mom to see because you were intubated. And the night of surgery was the worst night because you, uh, you went into hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic shock. And we almost lost you. And they had to pump you full of eight units of blood and about 20 bags of saline. And I also, I also felt like they didn't have an answer for everything, which it would, I was really scared, but thankfully my mom was there and uh, she would rub my feet to, uh, to help me through the pain. And that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, what <laughs> are some of the other things that your mom did uh, during this time to, to help you get through this? I couldn't possibly say them all. Um, she got food for me. She'd, she'd monitor my, um, my bathroom duties. 
She she would uh, give me my medicine. She would watch my IVs. She would uh, she would hold my hand just in case uh, the needles were were uh, were being a little tough on me. Even though I was a tough kid, uh, uh, she as I said, she would. Uh, um, Rutger uh, had a uh, donated liver from um, a deceased donor. Uh, his name was Kale Kostanek, and he was 28 years old and a race car driver. And, uh, and, and, you know, he was so wonderful and, and, and chose to give the gift of life. And since then, we've met his mom and his stepdad and his family, and they're wonderful. And we spend every year with his family uh, honoring him at his memorial laps um, at the raceway where he was killed. And uh, that family means so much to us. He, he will always be our hero. Who when we as humans face the hardships of life, what is often taken for granted comes into a much clearer perspective. If we are our mother's world, then she is the sun, the one that literally and figuratively gives us life. My mother, always by my side, helped me through this process more than any medicine or IV or x-ray possibly could. I love her so much, and even to this day she reminds me of when to take my medicine, how to keep clean, and how to live a life that before I had no idea even existed. I couldn't possibly repay her, though she believes that I could by doing one thing, loving her with all my liver. With